Okay, we're going to do a quick proof of the uniqueness theorem. Um, we're going to prove this by contradiction. So the first step to do this is assume the uniqueness theorem is false um, by assuming these three um, things. Okay, first is that the conditions of the uniqueness theorem are true, the, that f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x values, and that f of a equals g of a for some, for some point a, right? Any particular point, um, doesn't matter. Um, but instead of the conclusion of the uniqueness theorem being true, that f of x equals g of x for all values, we're going to say that that's not true and that there exists one value where f does not equal g. Okay, and what we're going to see is that these three assumptions, uh, if we assume them all together, if they all coexist, then we will get a contradiction. Therefore, they cannot all simultaneously be true. Oh, there's the bell. Uh, so, in order to do this, uh, we're going to let h, we're going to create this new function h, where h is f of x minus g of x. Okay? Um, because f and g are both differentiable, we know that because of that first assumption, we can also take the derivative of h, and therefore the mean value theorem applies, okay? Which the mean value theorem is basically just this formula right here, right? We know that there exists some point um, c, where h prime of c equals h of b minus h of a over b minus a. So we know a few things about these, um, these uh, uh, elements of this formula, okay? h of b, first of all, uh, h of b is not zero, because f of b does not equal g of b. So when we subtract, um, when we subtract f of b minus g of b, we get something other than zero. So this is not zero, okay? H of a, on the other hand, is zero, um, because f of a equals g of a. So when we subtract um, f of a minus g of a, we get zero. So this kind of goes away, but h of b is something, and b minus a has to be something as well. Okay, because b and a cannot be the same. Therefore, this h prime of c um, is not zero, because h of b is not zero, b minus a is not zero, and h of a is. Therefore, h prime of c cannot equal zero. So that's a equals with a slash through it, right? h prime of c is not zero. So at the point c, if you plug c into whatever function h prime is, you get something other than zero. Okay? However, we made this assumption again, this one right here, and we're saying since we made that assumption um, that f prime of x equals g prime of x, uh, and if we take the derivative of h prime, whatever it is, we'll get f prime minus g prime, right? Um, and, you know, if you take these two together, f prime minus g prime is going to be zero. So h a prime of x equals zero for all x values. All x values. But here we see a contradiction to that that h prime of c is not zero. So what we're saying is h is zero, h prime is zero for all values, um, and it's not zero at, at, uh, at x equals c. That is a contradiction. That cannot be true. It's like saying h prime of c is zero, and h prime of z is not zero. Therefore, our assumptions that we started with cannot all exist. So if we take two of them, we have to throw out the third. So if we take these first two assumptions, then we have to assume that that, assume, that third assumption is false. Therefore, there cannot be a point where, uh, where f does not equal g. There cannot, this point b cannot exist. Since there's no point where f and g are not equal, that means they are equal for all values. And that's the proof of the uniqueness theorem.